is something uh, uh, dependent on this f. Right? This string y is found as a constant already. So what we need to do is just to equate them, then we can find out the f. <coughs> so this will be a basic logic. Find out the formation of the first part. Okay. How to find use force analysis. Find out the deformation of the second part, also using force analysis. Then you add up the deformation of the first part, then you also add up the deformation of the second part. Then you, the result should be zero in order to maintain that the, this point remain in the original position. This will be the concept. So in fact, in the end, the f resultant you find in the number, <coughs> number second number will be be in inward direction, means a, it's a contraction. The force resultant you find here, the minus f plus k, should give you a minus result. <coughs> That's why you have you can identify the direction is in is here is leftward instead of rightward. And the direction of wall should also be in the inverse direction. <coughs> so that, that, that's what you can find later. Okay, but, or, at or, but at the beginning, we don't need to know exactly which direction it is, whether it's in this direction or whether it's in that direction. What we need to do is just to try to using the formulas. Later on, we find that it's negative, then it's the opposite direction as we assume. These are the, all the joints. This A, B, C, D. So the area, the cross sectional area of this one is equals to 200 millimeter, or 2,000 millimeter square. And the length here, the gain is 1.8 meter. Length here, 1.5. So if I have a force P applied in this direction, <coughs> the, I, uh, I want to find out what will be the stress induced in this number. <coughs> okay. The constant we know are G equals to 400 gigapascal, and the elongation of BD equals to 1.5 mm. Okay, uh, sorry. The question is to ask what is the P over here if we know that the elongation of BD is 1.5 mm. So try to find what is the P over here. Yeah. This will involve a lot of uh, force analysis for you. Mm -hmm. force, triangle. Force, triangle. force triangle. Force triangle, yeah, is just one way of a sort of, just one part of a uh, solving this. <laughs> Whether there will be force, uh, there, will, there will definitely be a force P acting on the C. So, if, uh, is it the only force that acting on the C? Is P the only force acting on the C? No, right? Why? The member B, 
PC, uh, okay, D also, okay, the resultant force of these two objects under D maybe give us a direction somewhere like this, possibly, okay, uh, we don't know yet, we later need to figure out, you know, what are the other forces? P is a force acting maybe by our hand or some other object, okay, so P is one, and are there any other possible forces acting under C? I mean, if I I look this number as an uh, object to analyze, so what are the other points that acting on this um, on this object through point C? It is in contact. The, as a as a way we look, it is a in contact. Look at the points of contact. Right? So here B C is actually in contact with this point C. So B C is possibly to act a force in this direction. So in this case, if we take the moment about the D, so these two will create these two forces will be creating some moment, and uh, this force will create zero moment because if I think about this point, the zero the force arm is zero. So this one I agree, it will you will not create moment about this. So we just need to look at this two. So if this two, P is definitely in this direction, horizontal direction, as we know already, given by the question. So if this one, this PC, right? This PC gives the force in horizontal direction. But if the PC does not balance out with the P, what will happen to this? If the force given by BC is more than more than this P, then the, the resultant force on this point will be this direction. Right. So you will make you will create a moment which is this force times this force arm. Then this moment will make this bar rotate. Okay. Then it does not satisfy this principle already. <laughs> Uh, in another way around, means this P must equal to the force BC over here. Yeah. So we can see that the force given by BC to this point C is equal to P. In another way around, in order to maintain this member BC equilibrium. Okay. So um, this member BC is exerted uh, uh, there's a force P over here the force it gives to this point is also P uh, so means this what means <coughs> the force acting on this point to this member is also P in order to maintain the static equilibrium of this point. So here we know for this point P right, there will be a force acting by this member B C on this point. Okay. There will be other possible forces acting by these two members, maybe in some other directions. Yeah. So this is one way to analyze the direction of a force. 